Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reviewing Blackhawk's Sherpa CQC holster. I'm also going to be uh, throwing in some information about the Sportster models because both of these holsters are very similar. Now, both the Sportster and the CQC are a level 2 holster. They have a passive retention uh, method which can be adjusted by this screw and also they have their active retention method which is the Sherpa tab which is deactivated by putting your finger on the tab. Blackhawk also makes a level 1 sh Sherpa, well not really Sherpa, but they make a level 1 holster if you want to use a level 1 holster which is just going to be the held in by friction and not the tab for uh, off duty. This holster and the Sportster uh, are mainly going to be geared up towards people that are either competition shooters, uh, more so for the Sportster, but you can use this. Uh, you can use the CQC for the you know, for competition if you if you want. Some competitions do require you to have active retention methods, so that way your firearm does not fall out while you're competing. Uh, you can use this for. Ideally for plainclothes work, if you're a law enforcement officer, or for security work, because it's, it's gonna it has a retention method, so that way someone can't take it from you. Now, if you want to use this for official uh, uniform police work, it'd be more it'd be better for you to get the level three holster of the CQC. The level three is gonna have a hood that goes over the back of your slide to, uh, for the Glock model. That's that's the only other one I've seen in person, but I'm pretty sure it's the same for for other models. Uh, it's gonna have a model that goes up over uh, the back of the slide to uh, to add to uh, the retention method. Level three is also gonna uh, come with a is gonna be light bearing. So if you have a light mounted on your pistol, then you're gonna probably want to get a level three if you want to go with this. Uh, color wise. For the CQC, you get a few colors for like the uh, for popular models, uh, namely like the Night Emperor 92. You're gonna be getting OD green, foliage green, coyote tan, and obviously black. For the Sportster, you're gonna be getting a uh, weird gunmetal gray. It's 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 pretty weird. It's like a really faded gray. Um, in terms of finishes, for the CQC model, you get this. Uh, matte finish. It kind of looks like a polymer or like a Kydex style uh, finish, kind of. This would be the matte, but there's also a basket weave that looks like carbon fiber, kind of, from the online pictures that I've seen. The Sportster is only going to come in this matte finish right here. Now, the difference between finishes for for the CQC's uh, either basket weave or the matte finish is that the basket weave finish is going to cost about approximately ten dollars more than the matte finish. Now the price point for these two holsters is going to be about this one's going to be about fifty dollars. I picked this one up in, one up in stores for fifty dollars. You might find it for a little bit less online. The Sportster is about forty dollars when I seen it in ba uh, inside Bass Pro. Now the difference is aren't only in terms of price point also in terms of the way you could carry it now for the Sportster it only comes with a paddle holster uh, well a paddle attachment now from what I read you could take that off and if you later get some different accessories uh, like namely uh, either like the quick release which I'll talk about in a little bit or this belt loop then you can put it on now the CQC model it comes with the belt loop and it also comes with a paddle. What's included inside the packaging for the CQC holster is going to be obviously the holster, you get screws, your mounting hardware, uh, you get the belt loop attachment, you also get these tabs so you could uh, adjust ride height on here. You get your manual, you get the paddle attachment and you get little uh, these J hooks that you put on here which do the they do the same thing as the as uh, these things you could adjust a uh, right height now obviously you can see all these screws on well all these screw hole possibilities 
you can, on both of them, you can adjust your cant. So, if you wanted your holster to, instead of be completely 90 degree vertical, you could have it either go back a few degrees or forward a few degrees, depending on how you want your holster to ride. Now, what I want to discuss next is going to be retention of the firearm. When your firearm is properly and securely uh, holstered, it's not going to come out. So, unless you press down this tab, it's not going to be released because the Sherpa system locks uh, has a tab that locks in to your trigger guard and prevents it from coming out. Now, pertaining to retention, once your firearm is securely holstered and locked in here via the Sherpa system, your firearm is completely secure. It's not going to come out until you depress this button. One added benefit of this holster for competition shooters is that you could also holster this your firearm well. It's uh, unloading the slide lock back. Now, a lot of competitions they require you to unload and show clear, so you could still do that and holster your firearm with your slide lock back and your mags out. So that's one added benefit of this holster. What I like to talk about next is going to be related to safety. A lot of people on the internet are going to tell you that you should avoid the Sherpa system due to the fact that it's dangerous and that you could shoot yourself. These claims aren't necessarily 100% true. There is a possibility that you can shoot yourself, but there's a possibility for pretty much almost anything. A lot of big name people will tell you to avoid the system, but there's also big name people that will say it's perfectly fine, namely James Yeager. This, this Sherpa system with this uh, finger tab, having your finger near the trigger is what they're basing their claims upon. And also a video titled, I Shot Myself, which is located here on YouTube, made by Tex Grebner of a video shooting himself in the leg while using one of these holsters. Now, this is a training issue. If you use the holster properly, you put your finger in the channel and on the tab, and you press down, and then you draw. Your finger will end up on the frame of the pistol where it should be until you're ready to fire. So, if you curl your finger like this, which you shouldn't be doing because you're not going to be doing it properly, your finger should be like that. If you curl your finger like that, you do have a possibility of shooting yourself because your finger is one, going to already be curled. Two, if it rides on the rounded edge of your frame, just riding on your fingernail, it already kicks it that way. So you do have a strong possibility of shooting yourself if you deactivate the Sherpa system by curling your finger. So just keep a straight finger. It's a training issue. You need to work on that through your dry practice and in your draw stroke. So as long as you do your due diligence, you shouldn't have a problem with that. So don't let people's comments saying that this is a dangerous holster pers persuade you into not purchasing one of these because this is a really good system. It's tried and true. It's just a lot of people see that and then they think that it's going to happen to them and it's not necessarily true. Also related to safety is going to be um, related around uh, the Sherpa system. Two negatives. Now, if you're in security or in off-duty law enforcement or if you are using this for uh, like a plain clothes work or even uh, uniform patrol, um, there is a possibility that a rock, if you're fighting in, and you're on the ground in a gravelly area or a rocky area or something, it is possible that a pebble can get behind this button right here and prevent you from activating. So if you need to draw and you're fighting on the ground, it's possible that you might not be able to get your pistol out. Another thing would be if you're really amped up and you're trying to draw your uh, draw your firearm and you pull before you activate the button you can't get your firearm out of the holster 
no matter how hard you press. Well, it's like that. I'm pressing really hard. So the only way this uh, you could fix this is by laying the holster down a little bit, uh, laying the firearm down a little bit, and then you just press the button and it'll allow you to retrieve your firearm. So you can't just pull it like that before. You have to press the button first and then draw. That's how this system works. Now, one last thing related to safety. If you're going to be using this holster for official duty, if you're a security guard, uh, or if you're plainclothes law enforcement, uh, I really would recommend you to use the belt loop attachment. Uh, because if you use the paddle and someone's fighting with you over your gun, there is a possibility that your firearm could be taken away from you and the holster, which I will demonstrate next. So, yes, I really strongly encourage you to use this. This is the most secure way that you're going to keep this firearm on you. Okay, now I have my sister here to help me. Uh, we're going to demonstrate why, if you're going to be using this holster for official duty, uh, namely plain clothes work or as a security guard, that you shouldn't use the paddle attachment. Now, my sister is going to portray either a criminal that's uh, resisting uh, or just uh, any sort of combatant. Uh, and uh, the way you take off the paddle holster is by lifting it up and then twisting it off. Now, obviously, when someone's fighting you for that firearm, that's probably going to happen. So, with this demonstration... <laughs> If someone's fighting you for it, they take the whole firearm and now they have it and they don't know what to do, but they're going to grip it and then they might even accidentally, they're, they're going to only see that there's this button and then they could take it. So it's literally super easy that just like that, even a 14 year old could take a firearm from you. So this is why you don't, uh, this is why you don't want to wear your firearm in a paddle configuration if you're going to be using it for that sort of work. Now in terms of accessories for the Sherpa system, as you can see there's plenty. In the center is going to be a QD attachment which you can utilize for as you for all these different types of uh, attachments or some of these you can mount directly as you can see there's the paddle and then there's also right here there's the belt loop that comes uh, with the uh, holster also this belt loop will hold uh, except up to two inch belts um, you could get a drop thigh rig if you're if you're interested in having your holster in that configuration another key thing that might be important for someone that's either let's say an armed citizen or military or law enforcement is this strike attachment up here this allows you to mount the holster to Molly, so you could have this on the front of your plate carrier ready to go. So that's uh, this is one added benefit if you get this uh, QD attachment and then you get this. Now, the negative thing is this QD system is about $20 or so, and then this is about another $20. So you're looking at about the same price as the whole holster itself just to mount this on a plate carrier. But once you do get this, I believe it comes with two. Uh, it comes with one uh, that mounts directly holster, and I think two of them. So you, uh, two other attachments that you can mount on something else, so that way you could attach and uh, detach two different things separately, so you don't have to like keep on taking them on and off. But that's some aftermarket, uh, some after, uh, some accessory you could get once you already have have this. Uh, Comfort on both the belt loop attachment and also the paddle are excellent in my experience. I've only used the paddle attachment for a couple try-ons and a couple draw strokes, but I mainly use the, uh, the belt attachment over uh, due to personal preference. Hi guys, and now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showcasing on how the Blackhawk Sherpa holster prints and uh, its concealability and how it looks in different types of garments. So here's just in a regular t-shirt. 
without it being concealed, obviously it's very noticeable. If you do try to conceal this, there's a major bulge. It, there's, it's very noticeable that something's there. You can see the grip. So this is how it's going to look if you're trying to conceal in a regular t-shirt or how it's going to ride if you just have it open carried while wearing a t-shirt. Now to showcase with a heavy coat on, this is a wool pea coat. So um, if you're in uh, colder climates, uh, obviously for winter and stuff eh, like that. So if you're going to be uh, carrying this uh, for concealed carry because uh, you find OWB more comfortable, um, obviously you can see in a heavy coat, it still prints a little bit compared to this side. Um, not as much, you might be able to get away with it because obviously during the winter there's probably a little bit more bulges and stuff like that with people wearing uh, bigger garments. This is what it looks like buttoned up. Um, a little bit less noticeable but you can still tell, uh, tell something's there with it open so if you wanted to walk around with your uh, heavy coat open uh, this is going to be definitely doable. Uh, and you can still get to it relatively easily. So, yeah. Now for a zip-up hooded jacket, that's a, this one's a little bit bigger than my size. This one's like a large or an extra large. Um, obviously, it's still noticeable. You can still see something if you really look, but obviously if you wear something a little bit, eh, with it being a little bit oversized, you can't really notice as bad as, as if this was a more fitted jacket. So, this is still doable. And also, if you have it unzipped, it's still going to be concealed. So if you want to do that, and you could still get to it relatively easily, just by... Now for the final garment uh, that I'm going to be showcasing, this is a more fitted, uh, this is my size, uh, fitted uh, pullover. This is sort of like athletic. Um, so obviously, it's very noticeable because this, uh, this garment's going to be hugging my, my body more. So you could notice the bulges. You can see the grip coming out. So this isn't going to be as concealable like that. So again, and it's going to look wonky if you open carry it like that. But it's doable. Um, you could still get to it relatively easy too. Okay guys, so here we're going to do it in the car the shot. Um, I still have right here. Um, best case scenario, we're just going to say that you had it uncovered and you're wearing a t-shirt. So you're clipped in, obviously, wearing your seatbelt while driving, but you need your firearm. So the seatbelt can get in the way a little bit if you're wearing it in 3 o'clock, if you're a right-handed person. Um, you kind of run into the same problem a little bit if you're wearing a 9 o'clock also, uh, if you're a left-handed person, uh, if you had that variant. Um, it's doable, but in some car models, uh, it's possible but that this could get in the way. Alright, to showcase another vehicle, uh, we're in a, uh, like a touring van, I guess, uh, like an old, uh, an old one. Um, so, the seatbelt's, uh, not hindering it as much as in, in the car. Again, vehicle by vehicle, it's going to be different. Maybe if you have a, just a uh, front seat pickup truck, you might run into some problems. Or if you or a car, different car, still drawable. May it's possible that it could also uh, it could get in the way. If like let's just say it was right here or something like that, it's possible. But uh, at this point, without like just like how we are right now, there's no problem with it. So overall, the Blackhawk Sherpa holster is a great holster and it's got tons of tons of accessories and potential going for it. It's mountable either on drop uh, drop leg, uh, jacket uh, jacket attachments, or even for a plate carrier. You also got an economy version, which would be the Sportster, which is going to cost a little bit less and is only coming with the paddle holster. So you got tons of options there. And if you're only going to be doing competition, I recommend you just get the Sportster. If you want to be, if you want to have a, if you're going to be concealed carrying or open carrying, and you want secure, uh, secure uh, retention of that uh, firearm, or if you're going to be doing security work or plain clothes, 
law enforcement work, I recommend you get the CQC model and you get the, uh, you utilize that belt loop attachment. Um, if you're going to be, if you want the Sherpa, then, and you're going to be using it for uniform patrol, I recommend you to get the level three. Um, you get added protection on that from, uh, from someone trying to take your firearm from you and you also open up the realm to the possibility of being able to have a uh, light bearing variants um, colors there's a few colors that you could get the firearm in and uh, that's uh, that's also an added benefit um, the fire uh, the holster is completely safe as long as you use it properly you train you train properly with your dry practice and your draw stroke and you shouldn't have a problem with shooting yourself as long as you're not getting too wild in your your draw stroke as long as you're controlled again training issue you're going to be perfectly fine so don't worry about the naysayers saying that you're going to shoot yourself it's not going to happen as long as you're doing everything properly that uh, in using the product as it should be used for fifty dollars or even less online for the CQC model uh, it's a great buy you could get the Sportster for a little bit less uh, also and that's also a great buy too if you're just going to be using it and you're not really worried about anyone fighting with you over your gun um i really uh, i recommend this product uh, whether you're going to use it for competition if you want to use it f uh, for uh, for official use or even for just range use it's perfectly fine and you also have the benefit of being able to uh, have your slide locked to the rear and being able to holster it for competition and range use. So that's that's also that's that's a really nice uh, feature right there. If you're still not wanting to get the Sherpa system due to the fact that your finger's right next to the trigger guard uh, when you deactivate the the button then you could get the safari land als system which is really popular and often recommended which is also recommended also by people who tell you not to get the sherpa system um you could go that route if you like yeah i don't i've never really looked it up um and i've never i don't have any experience with it but a lot of people recommend it too um you could go that route but one thing that i have heard is because of it's a thumb activator to break the retention on the firearm you can if you get if someone's trying to fight with you over that firearm they can accidentally without even knowing it deactivate the retention method and then they could draw uh, they could draw the holster the firearm out of the holster just without even knowing it just by grabbing it all on its own so you you have some negatives for both uh, for both uh, holsters, but I do recommend the Blackhawk. I have it, and uh, I've never had any trouble with it. Uh, so I think you guys should give it a try.